Great. Thank you, everyone. And uh, really appreciate this time. And, you know, you have uh, spent with Kedem and for us show and driving the HDB story for us. Uh, thank you for having, uh, inviting Lena and Rosie for, for this. Just to put a uh, context, I've uh, got Micrograph your team, who's our you know, strategic execution partner uh, for driving all the GCCs and investments into India and also helping us with the entire uh, planning, logistics, execution in the US. So thanks to them. We've got two fantastic leaders from uh, HDB cluster who have been uh, you know, driving the cluster last, uh, you know, I would say over a couple of decades. And um, both uh, are uh, very well known in terms of mentorship, influencers, guidance, and also angels in their own uh, uh, you know, respect, driving a lot of startups to mid-sized companies in the cluster with access to global markets. So thank you, Mr. Patel and uh, Santoshji for taking time and you know, putting uh, HDB on the global map. So, Thanks, so, so we've got uh, Amar also, Amar being our cluster head. Uh, I'll request Amar to, you know, put, uh, set up base and uh, uh, any, any opening remarks from our leadership on the HDB. And then uh, we'll request uh, Ram to drive the question answer a dialogue to bring out the magic of HDB, which will influence and drive the you know the business thought process for global companies to look at HDB in terms of how do we set up business, why business in HDB, what are the industries, what is the USP, um, the socio-economic you know, benefits for family, benefits for staff the ease of doing business, ease of logistics, infrastructure, accessibility. These are some of the critical points, as you know, uh, sir, that any business or any global business would like to, you know, go through as a DD process to establish for the next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. So this is some of the key elements that we want to bring out. And the usage of this would be in multiple formats. One as a total 30 minute session, which goes up on various uh, social media channels. And as and when we are getting some snippets from you, testimonials, validation, that will be used in small bits and pieces, again, to influence the target audience. I, I understand that uh, we have a hard stop at 7.30, so we will keep it very crisp to the point and you know drive this uh, uh, discussion. I'm going to step off. Step off because uh, we don't want too many people in the uh, call. I request the leadership to come on video whenever you all are, uh, you know, uh, commenting and discussing to be able to capture the video also during the session. So thank you again. And uh, over to Amar and the team and the leadership, Mr. Patel and Santoshji. Thank you. Thank you, Karam. Yes, uh, good evening, everyone. And, uh... I'm Amar Mohanak, yeah, cluster head for Publi uh, Dharwar Belgavi, KDM Beyond Bangalore Vertical. And I would say welcome to the HDB call, uh, the, one of the most interesting calls, as we are the second largest region in uh, Karnataka in terms of economy and in terms of population. So after Bangalore, we are driving the growth in Karnataka here. And uh, it's, it's uh, I'd like to, you know, uh, make you aware of some of the facts uh, we have, these are some of the strengths. Uh, this is the only place in India authorized to manufacture the national flag uh, in India, officially. Not only that, Belgavi also has the highest, uh, highest flag pole in India. So we are not just manufacturing it, but we are also keeping it high. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's a long history to this region. It's, it comes from uh, there are there are very remarkable. It's a land of artists, it's a land of freedom fighters, visionaries, and entrepreneurs. Right from Ketu Rani Chennamma, the the woman uh, freedom fighter, to Krantivir Sangoli Rayana, and uh, artists like Pandit Bhimsen Joshi, uh, Gangubai Hangal, 
and entrepreneurs like uh, entrepreneurs like uh, Mr. Babu Rao Kusalkar who who set the base in Belgavi uh, and what we call it as now as startup culture. It was then uh, being founded about hundred years back there to Mr. Vijay Sankeshwar of VRL and uh, and you know to the contemporaries of Mr. Pandare and Mr. Desh Deshpande. Visionaries like Sudha Murtiji. So all these have contributed in their own capacities to the to the growth of India, I would say. And now we would like to listen from from the leaders from this very own region of HDB, Mr. Santosh and Mr. R. K. Patel. Thank you. Thank Over you, to you, thank you Amar. <clears throat> thank you, Amar. Uh, great historical uh, introduction. You know, very inspiring to know that. Uh, you know, you, you have a long history uh, in the growth and development of Karnataka and, and you're doing something at a national level also. Okay, so I'm a little conscious that we have only about 30 minutes today. Typically, the session has been about uh, 50 minutes to an hour with the other regions. So if you have only 30 minutes, I'll quickly let uh, Santosh and uh, RK share their views, after which uh, I'll have some pointed questions uh, that uh, we throw open to the, audience, yeah, to, the to the panel, please. RKG or Santosh, you want to go ahead and just share? You're, you're on mute. Okay, you're on mute. Sure, I hope I'm audible. Uh, yeah, this is RK Patil. Yeah, uh, rightly said, uh, Ram and uh, Amar. Uh, yeah, this region, especially the northern part of the Karnataka, has uh, an immense contribution uh, in its own cap capacity to the development of a nation as well as a state uh, as a Karnataka. Okay. Uh, however, I, I, I think so for some reason uh, or the other things, I think so the, the whole economy and the, especially what I call it is the new age economy has always gravitated towards uh, the capital, which is down south of uh, Karnataka. And uh, as a result, uh, if you see some something in after post-independence and other historical data, most of the, most of the talent pool, uh, I would say, has always migrated. Uh, migrated in the greener pastures. So, while while the talent and the and the entrepreneurs are there, but the ecosystem has always helped them to gravitate and go and establish their business or establish their credentials, do the business, etc. Down in the south or up towards uh, Mumbai and uh, Pune region. Uh, I think so. That has happened for whatever reason and other things. But I think so. Let's talk in the context of the 21st century and very just a decade old, this one. I think so this region has started to get its due importance, both in terms of a political infrastructure development. Uh, people who have gone out from here have established and started to talk about this region, etc. And that has resulted in some, what I call it as a shift or change uh, that you see in last decade or so. Uh, and uh, probably that we would talk about that uh, while going ahead. And probably the initiative of KDEM is rightly to uh, what I call it as provide a booster to that uh, that acceleration that is going to happen. Santosh, uh, probably uh, you. Super, super. Well said, uh, RK. Santosh, yeah, you're on mute. You may have unmute. Yeah, yeah. I Actually, <laughs> so thanks, RK, and thanks, Amar, uh, for this uh, introduction. Uh, just to add uh, to what the discuss points now, um, firstly about KDM. KDM, of course, was established uh, to ensure that we have a balanced growth across Karnataka. One of Bengaluru, we... I just put my video off, I think, some internet channels. Yeah, Santosh, that'll be better, so, the video. Under so, Beyond Bengaluru. Yeah. And, so uh, under Beyond Bengaluru, we picked up clusters instead of uh, mentioning as tier two cities, which for a long time, we always, like RK said, the and even now, the epicenter always has been Bangalore and Karnataka. And we all have uh, kind of uh, been called tier two cities. So we changed the concept. We said, uh, we'll call them clusters, Hubli, Dharwad, Belgam as one cluster, Mysore as a cluster, and Mangalore as a cluster. And... Mangalore covers up to UDP. Egam, we said, uh, uh, why not uh, we kind of uh, focus on areas where we can show that this is the expertise and uh, 
instead of uh, you know like um, always work so Do we try to change the mindset we have a uh, chip design company out of Ubli and uh, even RK has a very high tech company out of Belgaum. Uh, so we have a lot of case studies which came out in the last 10, 15 years, which kind of uh, transformed the thought process and KDM kind of uh, added flavor to that, I can say, saying that, okay, this is the thing we should do, like artificial intelligence cluster kind of a thing in Hubli and EV, we did a very large roadshow recently in Belgaum. So same way, uh, with the latest technologies, I think uh, our regions are gearing up. And we have a lot of case studies. I think Amar has those reports in the last two, three years, what we have done. And uh, I'm very sure this roadshow with this kind of a focused approach of uh, projecting the, the cities, not just as a low-cost destinations, but uh, high-value, high-tech work being done probably at a uh, you know, uh, a good cost, I can say, like a profitable way, I can say. And a lot of companies are buying this now. Uh, we have, I think, uh, at least about eight, ten companies have come in the last one, one and a half year after we started working in KDM. So I'll stop here. Probably if any specific questions are there, then I can elaborate that. Thank you. Thank you, Santosh. Really appreciate uh, your insights. So uh, I want to give a quick uh, two-minute introduction to what we are trying to do in the U.S. and who we are, because there are a few people in the call. And then we can, depending on how much time you have, we can probably have uh, you know, an assortment of questions covering uh, various aspects that will be uh, interesting to the U.S. audience. Yeah. Um, so I'm Ram Kevlur. I head strategy for this company called Micro Grafeo. Uh, we are... Uh, holistic integration execution fulfillment partner for KDEP. So we've been working closely with uh, Sanjeev and the team um, over the last many months. So one of the things we are doing for KDEM is doing this uh, roadshow across the US to primarily you know, promote the prowess of uh, Karnataka as a state uh, beyond Bangalore also. Uh, and also, um, you know, figure out ways in which uh, the two economies can collaborate and cooperate and do many things, right? So that's the purpose why we are here. So we have five shows uh, covering almost the breadth of US, New Jersey, Boston, Atlanta, Dallas, and California. And uh, it's starting on the 23rd of April and going on till the 2nd of May, right? That's the uh, overall uh, uh, tenure of the road show. Um, and we as Micrographio, our uh, whole focus is to try and help India and Indian corporates to decentralize and distribute their employment model into the growing cities uh, of India, right? Because we firmly believe that uh, mass migration into tier one or metro cities uh, is not a sustainable model anymore. Uh, nor do we think working from home is a healthy uh, permanent solution to any of our employment uh, challenges. So we think uh, a good, solution in between is to actually take workplaces closer to where the employee wants to live so that, you know, within 10, 15 minutes of commute, people are actually able to get to work. Um, and that can only be possible, you know, if we uh, expand the infrastructure in uh, emerging cities of uh, India, right? So that is our vision. And, uh, you know, we are very proud and happy to be collaborating with Tatum and all of you on that. Um, so as far as this roadshow is concerned, uh, what we are trying to do by doing sessions like this is one, educate ourselves, you know, as the execution partners in terms of what the clusteral strengths are. Two, we also want to take uh, some information back to uh, the audience here when we have the road shows. Uh, in terms of, uh, in some ways, we are all brand ambassadors to the clusters, right? Ideally, you would have loved for some of you from each cluster to be here so, can, so you can eloquently uh, talk to them about everything happening. But our uh, Humble and honest intent here is to try and be an ambassador by learning as much as possible in the, in the short session. We are also going to use some uh, clips from here and put them on social media like LinkedIn, etc. So that we can excite the audience uh, even before the event starts so that they can actually come and participate. Yeah, that's intent. So I want to quickly deep dive into some aspects. I don't know what is the hard stop. So I'll assume I'll take 20 more minutes if you don't mind and then we'll try and wind up uh, in that time. Uh, first thing, I know you've already covered a little bit, um, uh, gentlemen, on what uh, Hubli is focusing, but can you peel the onion a little more on your cluster, on the focus of the cluster in terms of industries? 
uh, what specific industries are you focusing on and why those industries? And maybe also talk a little bit about the infrastructure and the talent that you have to support uh, your focus. Santosh, would you want to go ahead? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. basically, uh, when we talk of industry, we identified that Publi predominantly had a early kind of a manufacturing companies. So if you take probably 10, 15, 20 years, uh, industrial wall cluster hub was there in Hubli and it's been there, like uh, one of the highest exporters of walls, uh, industrial walls. Apart okay. from that, coming to technology space, uh, we had companies like uh, Sankalp Semiconductor. So we had our own BPO companies. Uh, we had um, a lot of startups in the ecosystem of uh, uh, Kaylee University and uh, Deshpande Foundation. So what we thought is we should leverage what we have and attract uh, in those in those areas. And again, um, we could be sector agnostic. There's nothing wrong in it. But uh, when we go probably we can go with the focused area approach because uh, KLE Tech has a, a Samsung artificial intelligence kind of a center of excellence which Samsung has set up. And uh, yeah. just yesterday, there is another LNT technology services started there uh, on the mobility uh, center of excellence in KLE Tech. Then Deshpande Foundation already has a large um, incubation and also a startup ecosystem, I can say, and skill ecosystem. And... Uh, Apart from that, uh, I would say uh, iMerit is another company which we attracted in the last year, which has about 8,000 employees globally working on uh, artificial intelligence, uh, more on uh, you know uh, using tools and providing solutions for clients, uh, global clients headquartered in California. And uh, they have, it's a good case study to present because similar companies can look at this and uh, it's a funded company, it is scaling up. And in Hubli only, we, they are scaling to 1,000 people. So it is self as a wow. good numbers to do. So uh, I think uh, if we can map what has happened in the last couple of years, and probably that will be your case study for companies to showcase whenever you are doing a roadshow, that, okay, Hubli, these kind of things. Belgam will have a similar case study, which I'm sure RK will explain. And, uh, and cover that because companies would also look at Okay, why should I go to Hubli? You know, your first question could come up that. Uh, right. You cannot keep telling that it is a, you know, a tier two, like a, what we told, like a low cost center and all that. You know, like uh, then across India, they will say there are 100 centers. Uh, why we should choose Hubli? You know, like, so a focused uh, thing with a case study approach saying that, okay, this company came, this is the case study, here is the university, here they helped and here they grew. Then this is the, you know, like a success story in that. So, so similarly, Belgam EV and uh, like aerospace SEZ is there in Belgam. I think we should definitely leverage that because one of the, I think, only companies which produces parts to both Airbus and Boeing out of uh, uh, Belgam. So, and uh, the same people are doing the consumer clusters in Hubli, started their consumer cluster uh, Hubli in, in Kopal, they have toy cluster. So I think mm -hmm. uh, the goal is uh, this roadshow should get, uh, you know, convert into or converge into some success stories which we can take forward and uh, our local team can take it forward. That's all we can say. And uh, if any help required even locally there, I also connected Sanjeev to my Thai network because I'm on the, I'm a trustee at Thai Global. So I already connected Sanjeev to Thai New York, Boston, Atlanta, uh, in the Valley and, you know, all, all of that. So anything required from my end, happy to you know, help you out in, in, in the US also. Yeah, I'll stop here. I'll uh, ask RK to take over. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Santosh. Very insightful and appreciate that. Yes, RK. Yeah. So uh, uh, continuing what uh, uh, Santosh uh, mentioned and to build up on a little bit of the things. Uh, yes, uh, showing an uh, initial successes, how companies started here and then built up on the uh, availability of a talent pool or what they could uh, gather from an existing, uh, what I call it as an infra or the visions, and then and then going on to acquire uh, global cliently is, is an important aspect because that, that shows everybody or gives the confidence. I think so, uh, very specifically talking about Belgam, okay? Uh, again, I'll a little bit relate on the past, okay? Uh, 
uh, not many people might know Kirloskers started their entrepreneurial journey from Belgium more than a century ago. Okay. Mm. So they started with the bicycle operations, but see where they they have gone. Okay. Uh, and then they, of course, they went on to the bigger cities, etc. So likewise, Belgium has been always a hub for, I would say, uh, foundry, uh, metallurgy, uh, and then a little bit of a manufacturing. And then that 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 exactly connects to what uh, Santosh mentioned. That led to establishment of the first uh, uh, aerospace ACZ, uh, which has been there here for the last 13, 14 years. And they have been able to bring in almost 17 or more than 17 JVs from European Union and uh, uh, American, which now is trying to get or it will be a part of an ecosystem for an uh, aviation hub itself. Because as you know, mm -hmm. aviation itself is an, uh, is a large uh, uh, supply chain of a different variety of an engineering services as well as products companies. And that you can see building up here. And so it's it's it can be as high-tech as somebody can think of an aviation, not just the high-tech, aviation, precision, safety. So those kind of a talent pool and uh, access to knowledge hub is available in this cluster. And especially if I were to point out Belgium. Uh, secondly, I would also like to say that uh, uh, there have been successes like uh, uh, take for example an IOT, okay, Sensi uh, which is which is supplying to a global cliently and in automotive and in industrial hub based out of Belgium. Okay, mm -hmm. Ben had a remarkable story in last seven, eight years. Built the company, built the product, tested it from here, and now supplying it to the global companies. Likewise, uh, fast, fast uh, ISP provider who came here and set up a business saying that I will provide a high speed internet connectivity to the homes and to the offices in Belgium. Okay, mm -hmm. and they built a business, they started acquiring customers, and then they, today they compete even like. To the, the to the ISPs like a geo, so homegrown mm -hmm. brand, but catering to this, and then they, they coexist even though there are large players like a geo. So that's again a success story. From there, they migrated to providing a cloud-based services and cloud infrastructure hosting services for the small and the medium scale businesses, and now they can even cater to the global client. And similar is the I would say an example of uh, Revolt Motors building an EV platform, two-wheeler EV platforms, everything here with a vision to set up a manufacturing unit. Okay, so those are the success stories. And well, having said that, I would also relate to myself. Okay, we have been here for last 15, 16 years, built really, a, I would say, a world-class uh, niche technology company in embedded software and embedded platforms. Today, we cater to eight of the top 10 global semiconductor companies uh, in, in the semiconductor. Do software, those, uh, software for those semiconductors, both product engineering services as well as pure play services. So what uh, I would say uh, Wipros of the world or LNT or HCL of the world did out of, let's say, Gurgaon or a Bangalore or a Pune, you can do it from cities and the towns like uh, Belgium, Hubli, Darwad. Simply because, I, as I would say, I, I, I mean, in fact, we can talk about this. This region houses 30 top engineering colleges uh, of Karnataka, which can be counted here. And there's a huge talent pool, which has, which has, it has nurtured in the past. And they are now active and they are, while they may not be here, uh, but they have been in large MNCs, multinationals. They are in a decision-making capability. And they have an affinity to look back at their alma or look back at their uh, roots where they have come from. And these cities can now offer uh, a very good, what I call it uh, as an infra, as comparable to any of the metros of the tier one cities of them. And these cities are now well-connected. Uh, probably both Hubli and Belgium uh, count in terms of the second to Bangalore in terms of an aviation connectivity. You could go to any metro uh, from this here within one hour. So movement of a talent pool or movement uh, of a talent or to your customer engagement or a nearest center is possible from these locations. And now is the best time to for an entrepreneurs or the even the global companies to look back as these centers uh, to set up uh, their uh, what I call it as an 
engineering centers or in R&D centers, etc. In fact, just I would like to mention one word. Uh, we have set up an R&D center for one of the most high-tech Israeli company. One-fifth of their engineering center we run out of Belga. This is in the mobility, AD, ADAS, verification and the validation, uh, running out of Belgium. So this, mm -hmm. this is now possible. Our teams regularly go to travel to Tel Aviv and we host Tel Aviv parties in Belgium. This was probably possible in big metros 10 years back, but this is happening now uh, into these clusters. Wonderful. Wonderful, Arkeji. Very inspiring and thank you, you and Santosh, you know, for... I, ideally, we would, I would love this to be a two-hour conversation, right? Because as you start peeling the onion, uh, it's actually flavorful, right? Not necessarily water in the ice situation, but just to, but, just uh, to add, yeah, there's a saying, you know, when we uh, speak of Acres uh, Aerospace Cluster at Belgavi, yeah, that the current uh, airplanes of the uh, Airbuses and the Boeings, uh, there is one part. Uh, in all these airplanes made, that is coming out of Belga, the landing gears are made out of Belga. Mm -hmm. of these airplanes. Excellent. Looks like we are not very far away from truly being the manufacturing hub of aircrafts globally, right? You know, I, I hope that is the pathway we are looking at. Uh, so great. Yeah, I want to spend a few minutes just talking about uh, because one of the the most important uh, topics that's that's discussed in most of these events is about the employability of the talent, right? I think be it the Mysore cluster or the Mangalore cluster, there is no dearth of colleges in Karnataka, right? You know, it's uh, well known that it is the mecca of education as far as uh, India is concerned in a big way. But how employable are uh, some of these uh, talents which are coming out and is there a bridge uh, that you're creating in terms of skilling, upskilling, reskilling, etc., especially to suit the industries that you're focusing on or even otherwise? Uh, and two, what do you have any special mechanisms in place to retain the talent uh, right in Hubli? Because over the last 20 years, we've seen the phenomenon has been for people to move into metros. It could be, it could be a Bangalore or a Chennai or a Gurgaon, etc., which thankfully has gotten a little arrested because of COVID, right? COVID has... Uh, you know, change the employment model in a big way. But uh, can you throw some light on the focus of the clusters, of this particular cluster on retaining the talent and also keeping them relevant uh, and, and being able to hit the road running as quickly as they're out of colleges? I think uh, the challenge here is the number of students who come out, not just in Dharwad, Belgaum, but overall Karnataka, uh, more than 100,000 students graduate only in engineering. Mm. So uh, this is not specific to our cluster. The only yeah. advantage uh, I see in Bangalore is uh, they get access to some kind of internship, some kind of a network, which gives them, uh, uh, you know, um, an edge over other students. So that is where, uh, you know, when uh, companies start coming here, like what we are seeing and it is Santosh, you may want to switch off your video please. please yeah i think yeah yeah so that that's uh, are you okay now yeah yeah much better yeah, yeah. so uh, what i was trying to say if we can um, uh, leverage the ex the the concept of having internships and other things for in our clusters uh, so that the talent, what happens is the once they go out, getting them back becomes very difficult. Like once they hit either Bangalore, Hyderabad, and Hubli is such a place located. We are equidistant from Pune, Bangalore, Hyderabad, you know, like and Chennai also is not far. You know, like four or five major locations are like at a overnight journey, I can say. So that's the thing. So, so it is a slow process of solving. It can't be solved, uh, you know, uh, quickly. Uh, but uh, I think KDM and we have a talent accelerator program under KDM under which we are taking up such initiatives. And uh, I am also running a nonprofit which does this kind of a skill development. To it. We ourselves have skilled more than 10,000 people now in the last four or five years here. So it is a, a you know ongoing challenge, I can say, and RK can add to it because uh, RK has both presence in Bangalore and Hubli. So he has both flavors uh, going in. So he knows it better. 
Uh, yeah, so j just, uh, yeah, uh, for, for any any company or in industry, what I feel is, uh, it's not just the fresher, fresher talent that matters. It's also a lateral hires, uh, uh, which is which is quite important uh, for for growth or uh, anything. So, one of one of the things that we have seen is uh, uh, generally getting senior talent to this region uh, is a little bit of a challenge unless unless they have a scale or unless they have a compelling reason uh, reason to move to this is the result. So, but what we have done is slightly different. We have we have started or begin to establish small centers where people can gravitate if there is if there is a senior leadership roles available so for example we we are we have almost begin a center small center in pune where a leadership role is available and they can gravitate and slowly people would now go transact between pune as well as a belgaum that's a that's a one more this one people will always travel from uh, welcome to this one and then at later stage they can travel back to this one so and identify people from this region who have gone out uh, in the past two two decades or a decade old back etc and they may have a, some compelling reason to come back uh, the reasons are basically the family they would like to lead a life closer to their parents or relatives etc because they would have created some immobile assets, et cetera. And then people, I, I think so once they are assured that the same quality of a job, technical proficiency, and of course the commercials, the payment structures are met. I think so they will they will gravitate. And then this has been the story across the Europe. If you see, take any of the biggest well-known brands, I'll, I'll, I'll go very specific to in Germany, okay? Most of these companies have a rural presence in Germany. Take, for example, I have visited Hela Gutman and its development centers. 150-year-old company, which is a leader in automotive. Or take, for example, Bosch. It's got so many of the development centers in rural parts of Germany. And okay. why did that? Because I think so, the seamless way of a connectivity communications is available in between these metros and other things. And that is the biggest change that is what we see in 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 current India. The 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 cluster towns of Belgam, Hubli, Darwad region are very very well connected, not just with the Bangalore, but with multitude of the cities across India. Be it an air connectivity, or be it uh, high speed trains which are being introduced, and then the road infrastructure, the golden quadrilateral uh, road infrastructure, people can drive. In for a day's meeting, I have done days breakfast sessions with the customers in Pune, and I can come back to a dinner uh, in Belgium. So that's a kind of a flexibility, and it is affordable. So I think so. Those are the things which people would gravitate towards that, and the senior talent would look at moving this. And um, uh, as far as the training, I think so. Uh, training and the talent, uh, I think so. Uh, Santosh has covered it enough, and then. Most of our educational institutes now have access to large global technology companies establishing their training as well as innovation and R&D centers establishing. So the fresh talent has an access to those kind of an infra already. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you, Patiji. So I, I want to ask a very practical question. So the units that have uh, set up uh, uh, GCCs or uh, you know smaller uh, shops in, in the HTB region, are they mostly exclusive there, or it is a hub and smoke model with, with some presence in Bangalore, and then they look at uh, you know certain other services coming out of the cluster. You know what is the typical configuration that you think we should recommend to our clients? Uh, you know when we do the roadshow. I think we coined this concept of spoke shore. Yes. Actually, okay. that is where uh, with KDM and uh, I think it's working well. We don't say that you move everything from Bangalore to Hubli or uh, Belgaum. 
what we say is yeah. you can keep your hub there and uh, spokes could be created in uh, thing and today like uh, rk was saying it is a seamless integration you know we have high speed connectivity in hubli i don't think uh, those kind of uh, challenges which were there earlier are not there so we no. we can always integrate especially i'm talking from technology perspective technology companies and right. uh, for manufacturing companies also because there is a manufacturing talent especially in belgaum and the uh, hubli belgaum is known as a foundry cluster and the foundry has been very big in there so uh, i think we have a lot of uh, you know sir, you know compelling reasons to tell that it is uh, you know a, a good strategy to have a center in belgaum center in hubli and 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 integrate with your overall uh, uh, company strategy so that's the pitch i think we should go for even even for people who are foreigning into india for the first time i i would assume uh, that first time uh, i'm sure they would be first checking the box for the big cities i don't know whether they would be directly landing into you know <laughs> hubli because yeah. see, other thing is these companies like i merit has a uh it's a california based company and then they have a center in kolkata then they have center, multiple centers and right. uh, apart from Co- kolkata hubli will be their second largest center now in days to come uh, okay. so and it's a newest center but it will be the second largest center kolkata is because the founder was from there and you know that's how the connectivity was there for them to uh, build there but uh, uh, i'm sure uh, there will be many companies like uh, we were talking to kindrel and which went to mysore and now they are saying we'll uh, come to hubli as well i'm sure uh, there are a lot of case studies uh, and and i think the what rk was mentioning we should focus on our uh, education uh, you know uh, uh, institutes around here we have iit in darwad indian institute of technology yeah. in the triple it is in darwad again very very rare combination that we have vtu is in belgaum vishweshwaraya technical university headquarters and then right. uh, parke like was saying many other uh, top education institutes and uh, universities actually not just institutes we have university agri universities in darwad so i think you name a sector i think we have a st- we have something to offer for them saying that okay why don't you look at center of excellence in uh, ai at uh, kle tech and uh, can you collaborate with them you no know, if it is a high tech company so it, it depends on what companies are looking at and and just rk said there is a tel aviv company coming and doing something in belgaum so these kind of uh, case studies will kind of uh, uh, you know signal them that oh this this is happening already in belgaum because if it's a first time uh, they wouldn't know what is there here, here in this region so it is our uh, responsibility when you make a pitch that uh, uh, okay these are the top three things you can look at before you can make your decision you know like so that's what i said wonderful yeah, yeah. thank you santosh so, very uh, um, uh, just to add there are companies who have come and sh- set up a direct shop in uh, in in belgaum but what it took them is a mothership like uh, uh, scz yeah yeah okay so i think so that gives them a good amount of a confidence etc but uh, i think so these things can happen now yeah yeah thank you thank you i'm conscious of the time so before we leave uh, uh, santosh uh, in in one line if you want to paraphrase uh, how you want to position uh, htb in the global uh, map what would what would that be i think uh, htb is a cluster focused on uh, new age technologies uh, artificial intelligence and i would say electric vehicle and and uh, esdm is another because we already have a esdm cluster coming up i think the focus on three four core areas because you are going there all the way to us i think that would uh, be a big differentiator and uh, if you can uh, before because you have another 10 days to go i think almost 7 8 days to go before your yeah. journey starts so if you can map also from companies who are shown interest and registered and uh, do some amar can do some ground work in terms of what they do what are their you know uh, expansion plans or something order from their website if we can do some homework even before yeah. you go there that would be a big game changer i can say to attract them and uh, and locally don't worry about it we are there our case there i am there so don't worry about it that's a good part of hubli darwad belgaum you you ask for it you will get it i am very sure like don't worry about all that thank you thank you for that reinforcement santosh really appreciate uh, mr patel any any last words from you on uh, how you would want to position the usp for the region uh i would probably take a two or a three sentence uh i think so the new india is really shining and uh, uh 
people should not miss this opportunity and the bus. Uh, we are going to be a global hub and uh, anybody thinking about global, in the, especially in the current global economic as well as a political scenario, when Apple thinks to move to India, I think so time for everybody to look at uh, this and then there's no other better sector than Hubli Dharawad cluster, Belgium cluster uh, for their growth. Yeah, very, very well said. Thank you, Arki. Amar, any last words from you? I would say as, as India prepares to be a leader by 2047 and HDB cluster is a, at the right inflection point to offer to the world that you know we are prepared to you know welcome you to uh, to you for to serve to the globe as we are already doing and we invite the globe to come here and expand and scale their operations from here in a in a in a better profitable way sure, sure. thank yeah. you amar thank you so before we wind up uh, we are actually now inundated with uh, many leaders and thought leaders and industrialists from within the US who can make a difference to our roadshow, either in terms of sharing their experiences of already having uh, experienced the emerging India or having a larger understanding of how the global markets are playing out and what India should gear up to. So we have, we have a bunch of people who we have lined up. But uh, my request to you, Santosh uh, Patrilji and uh, Amar, if there are certain companies who have really done well in your cluster, and uh, there are some CXOs based in the US who can come and eloquently talk about the journey they have undertaken and inspire the audience here. Please do pass on the names. Uh, we cannot necessarily guarantee they'll be in the meeting because we are looking at six, seven profiles for every center. But definitely, you know, we would want to give uh, an equal chance to every cluster to have one of their representatives come and inspire the audience. So appreciate some help on that. Yeah. Definitely. Yes, sir. You can count us. Super. Certainly. Some have already been lined up and we'll work on more. Yeah. Super. Thank you. Um, uh, Gaurav, anything you want to share? Uh, also, uh, depending on who is comfortable, Santosh, uh, RK Amar, we, we, we may need a 60 second, uh, uh, you know, video from all of you. Just talking about, uh, you know, the cluster itself and, you know, why people need to look at uh, HTB seriously, etc. Uh, I'd appreciate if you can try and get that to us in one or two days, maybe over the weekend. It can just be shot on your personal phone. We have a team that can clean it up, etc. But sure. uh, you know, th this week is all about inspiring the audience to so that the right quality and the quantity come to the uh, shows. So I appreciate your support to, towards that end. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any Thank you. anything? I know. I know our CEO is on. Has been on the call. Uh, Gaurav, I don't know if you're still there. Anything for a quick one minute you want to? Cover before we wind up the call. No, Gaurav is not there. Sandy, anything you want to say? Sandy uh, heads uh, the development in the US for uh, us. Sandy, anything you want to share before we wind up? Thank you. No, no this, these, all these are excellent points, and I'm very inspired to meet this group. I posted some questions. I got some answers to that. I'm going to follow the uh, cluster story very closely from here. So super. Thank you. Thank you all of you, and have a wonderful evening. And thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Good night.